This is IES 2021, question one, paper one, party. Let's see what the question is saying. So given a demand function, you're given a supply function. And the question is asking you to find consumer surplus under the pure competitive market. In order to find consumer surplus, we should know the definition of consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is if you have a supply curve and you have a demand curve, then the and you know, wherever demand and supply meet, you have a price curve. Then the area below the demand curve and above the price. This is the consumer surplus. This area is the consumer surplus. This is the producer surplus. Area below the price, above the supply curve. Now, usually, if this is your consumer surplus and producer surplus, usually the demand curves that you would have seen would be linear demand curves. But in this case, they're not linear. They're non-linear, right? I mean, this is a completely quadratic demand curve that we have. So let's try and plot this demand curve first of all. So in order to plot this, I know X can only take positive values because X is the consumption. So if I take price is equal to 6 minus X whole square, I can start by taking X is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. These are more than enough. When X is 0, the price is 6 minus 0 whole square, 6 square, 36. 6 minus 1, 5 whole square, 25. 6 minus 2, 4 whole square, 16. 6 minus 3, 3 whole square, 9. 6 minus 4, 2 whole square, 4. 6 minus 5, 1 whole square, 1. 6 minus 6, 0 whole square, 0. 6 minus 7, minus 1 whole square, 1. 6 minus 8, whole square will be minus 2 whole square 4. 6 minus 9 whole square will be minus 3 whole square which will be 9. 6 minus 10 whole square will be minus 4 whole square 16. So can you clearly see that this is coming like a parabola, right? So if you take these values, if I take 0, when x is 0 price is 36. When x is 6 price is 0. And then in between this, it's like a parable. Something like this. Okay. This is your demand. Now let's make the supply curve. In order to make the supply curve, the supply curve is given to you as PS is equal to 14 plus X. So when X is 0, price is 14. When X is 0, the price is 14. When X is 1, the price is 15. Isn't it? When X is 0, price is 14. So this is your supply. Now I have to find where do they intersect. So intersection. So the intersection will take place where the demand will be equal to the supply. Right? So the demand is PD is equal to 6 minus X whole square. The supply is PS is equal to 14 plus X. Am I right? It's 14 plus X. Yes. So the price from demand and supply should be equal. So 6 minus X whole square should be equal to 14 plus X. So if you go ahead and you get 36 plus X square 
minus 12x is equal to 14 plus x, x squared minus 13x plus 36 minus 14. This would be x squared minus 13x plus 22 equal to 0. So x squared minus 22 is 11 into 2. 11x minus 2x plus 22 will be 0. x. x minus 11 minus 2. x minus 11 is equal to 0. x minus 2. x minus 11 is equal to 0. So from here, what will you get? You will get x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 11. Okay? Now just think about this. See, when x is 2, then one, once they're intersecting this part, and when x is 2, then your price from the demand side will also be 6 minus x whole square, which is 6 minus 2 whole square, which is 4 whole square, which is 16. And from the supply side also, it will be 14 plus x, which will be 16. One is this, that they're intersecting. 16 is the price. The other is, where are they intersecting? They're intersecting when x is equal to 11, right? Isn't it? So this is what is happening. Now, if I just extend this a bit more, right? So let's say I extend this above. And somewhere over here, they're meeting. Where x is 11, somewhere over here. When x is 11, what will I get? Well, if I go ahead and observe this, and I look at the price in this case, it is going to be the case that my law would not be satisfied, isn't it? It is going to be the case that one, the law of demand will not be satisfied. And sec because my demand curve is upward sloping. And secondly, there will be no consumer surplus in that case. Because if I find the intersection here, then the area above the demand curve had to be consumer surplus. But you know, because above the demand curve, there is no area. This is an infinite zone. There is, I mean, we cannot have a consumer surplus here, right? The consumer surplus cannot be defined because for consumer surplus to exist, your willingness to pay is more than what the price is. You are willing to pay more, but you are paying less. But here, this is not the case. It's the opposite, right? So I cannot go ahead and find consumer surplus in this zone. So in this case, the only consumer surplus that I'm talking about is this. This is my consumer surplus that I'm talking about. And this consumer surplus has X is equal to 2 and it has P is equal to 16. So basically, I just have to try and find this area. And to find this area, because this is not a triangle, I cannot do half into base into high. The only way I can go ahead and solve this is to integrate the area below the demand curve and then to subtract this area. So when I will integrate the area below the demand curve, ideally I will get this entire area. And then if I subtract this area, I will get the consumer surplus. So let's let's integrate. So area below the demand curve is to integrate the demand curve. My you know equilibrium is when x is equal to two. So from zero to two, my demand curve that I have in hand is. PD is equal to 6 minus x whole square. So I will say 6 minus x whole square dx. And I will go ahead and get from here 6 minus x whole cube by 3 into minus 1 from 0 to 2. Right? 
right? This is what we are going to go ahead and get. Either you can do it in this way or you can always go back and expand this. So you can always go back and write this as 36 plus 6 square minus 12x and integrate this from 0 to 2. It's fine. Any way is fine. So if you do this, then, then also you will get 36x plus x cubed by 3 minus 12 x squared by 2 whole from 0 to 2. So from here, you will get 36 into 2 plus 2 cubed by 3 minus 6 2 square. So you will get 72 plus 8 by 3 minus 6 into 4. So you will get 72 plus 8 by 3, 24. So you will get 72 minus 24. Forty-eight, right? So forty-eight plus eight by three. Now, you still have to try and see this thing that I am yet to go ahead and find the consumer surplus. For finding the consumer surplus, I have to subtract this area from it. So this is a rectangle that is being formed. So its area is going to be length into breadth, which is going to be sixteen into two, which is going to be thirty-two. So I'm going to subtract 32 from this to get the net consumer surplus. So consumer surplus will be 48 plus 8 by 3, which was the entire area under the demand curve minus 32. So this is going to be 16 plus 8 by 3. So this is going to be 48 plus 8 by 3. This is going to be 56 by 3. So this is going to be your consumer surplus. So it's a, it's a pretty simple question. But the only part that you have to consider is, although there might be another intersection here, but because this is not the definition of consumer surplus, the consumer surplus is when you are willing to pay more than what price exists. And in this case, you're always willing to pay less than the price that is being charged. This is not part of your consumer surplus. You're just going to have one part as your consumer surplus, which is going to be this area. So ideally, you can always go back and you can always say that, you know, I'm not going to consider this part for consumer surplus. I'm just going to focus on, this can be a dotted line and you can only focus on the initial part for consumer surplus. Okay, thank you.